These are the faces of India's national shame. Tens of thousands of them hounded out of their homes, and all because of this, their faith. They're Christians, and in India that's rare. Soldiers now stand guard outside the makeshift camps they've been forced to flee to. Hindu hardliners want these people dead for no other reason than their religion. They don't want us filming here. Producer Neville Lazarus is manhandled. Extra paramilitaries are called for backup. They weren't around when the people needed them. The crowd is incensed, urging us to come inside. The area's top official tries to calm them. But these are the same officials the Christians feel failed to protect them. And still they don't feel safe. The camp's been attacked twice. The authorities, they say, just look away. They are stuck in no man's land. They don't feel safe outside of the camp. And yet, although they're living under armed guard, so many of them in one place makes them an obvious target. And all the while, they believe no one cares and no one is listening. We have nowhere to go, they say. Then one woman cries out for help, help from the international community. All our homes have been destroyed, she says, and the government's just not helping us. Please, can someone help? Their stories are shocking. This woman watched as the Hindu gangs burned her brother alive. Even a nun was gang raped and paraded naked in public. We take Maniar back to his village for the first time since the attacks, past the church where he used to worship. Hundreds of others have also been destroyed. The killing of a Hindu leader sparked this orgy of violence. Christians were blamed and Hindu gangs went on the rampage, destroying village after village, house after house. 50,000 Christians have been left homeless. Maniar's home is barely recognizable, with walls smashed in and every room trashed. Even the family Bible was ruined and all their belongings were just set on fire. He, his wife and three children have nothing left but the clothes they fled in. Those remaining say they were forced to convert to Hinduism, often at the end of a gun, or as this woman tells us, with a knife to her throat. The conversions are continuing. These pictures were filmed by a Hindu cameraman. The Christians renouncing their religion each have a tikka mark placed on their forehead to signify the change in their status. There's also ceremonial burning of Bibles, hymn sheets and Christian booklets. These Christians insist their conversions are all voluntary, but they know now they won't be targeted. Now, if you want to stay safe in Orissa, you fly a saffron flag. It's the Hindu color, the sign which says you're not Christian, and the mobs will then pass by and not attack. Displays of Christian faith are simply not tolerated anymore. It's mostly done in secret. Orissa's slowly being ethnically cleansed of its Christian minority. They were uh, looking for me to beat or probably to kill me. That's why I was afraid I could not uh, live there. In the refuge camps, the tales of cruelty wrought on them is staggering. This woman saw one of her grandchildren, who was paralyzed, doused with petrol and set alight. The country's prime ministers called this Christian persecution, the worst since independence, a national disgrace. But so far, he's been powerless to stop it. Alex Crawford, Sky News, Orissa.